Welcome back to another episode of Times Radical. Today, we're going to be assembling the Rolex 4030, the Zenith. Now let's check it out. Okay, so let's just begin by saying the gear train's already installed and the pallet fork balance wheel barrel. But what we are doing is installing the fourth wheel driver. It's pressed on the pinion of the fourth wheel. We have the intermediate wheel and the brake lever, which I keep on during the cleaning of the watch. We have the intermediate chrono lever spring. I leave this installed with the screw so it stays in place during the cleaning as well. I will take it out later. The last two parts highlighted are the intermediate counter lever spring and the brake lever spring, both best to stay in place during cleaning as well. The next part of this watch to install is the column wheel. This wheel can also be referred to as the castle wheel. Now we'll be installing the center chronograph wheel, which counts the seconds for the stopwatch function. And we'll be installing the minute counter wheel, which counts the minutes for the stopwatch function. Notice the intermediate minute wheel counter connects with the minute counter wheel and the brake lever lines up with the center chronograph wheel. We will come back to that at the end of the video when we test the stop, start, and reset functions of the stopwatch. Now we install the return to zero lever and the main operating lever. The return to zero lever goes in first under the main operating lever and needs to be held down because it's pressed against the other side of the brake lever spring. You will see the purpose in the end when we stop the chronograph. The return to zero lever will move slightly and the brake lever will stop the center chronograph wheel. Like, subscribe, and watch the entire video. It's really cool and may be the last one I film of the 4030. Next part to install is the minute counter wheel jumper. It keeps the minute wheel in place when the minute jumps. It has a pinion which pivots inside a jewel and it has its own minute counter wheel jumper spring welded to itself. So you should always be careful and clean this part by hand with a paintbrush and some alcohol, let's say. Now double check the placement of your operating levers and spring, which you've just installed before. This includes the spring for the brake operating lever and that's where it connects. Now we have your main operating lever that you need to make sure is connected to the column wheel. Next is easy. This is the reversing wheel for the automatic system. After you install it, you can wind the watch by turning the crown to make sure that the reversing wheel engages. Next up, we'll be installing the return to zero hammer for the center seconds and minute counter of the chronograph runner. Notice how it's placed on top of that pinion and how it engages with the column wheel. Also, the two faces of the hammer line up with the heart-shaped cams on top of the minute counter and center seconds counter for the chronograph. Now we can install the chronograph bridge. Notice how the chronograph bridge holds down the center seconds counter, the minute counter, the minute jumper, the intermediate minute wheel lever, the reversing wheel. Also notice 
the jumper attached to the chronograph bridge that connects to the return to zero hammer. We'll now be installing the maintaining switch pin, which goes down through the main plate and operates the hour counter for the chronograph runner. The tip of the switch pin is also connected to the column wheel. We'll also be installing the column wheel jumper sole, which is connected directly to the column wheel as well. Now we'll be installing the operating lever spring. Notice how this spring is pushing against the pin on top of the operating lever and the operating lever is weaved under the sole jumper and the switch pin, but also connecting to the column wheel. The next part we'll be installing is the intermediate clutch lever and wheel. The end of this clutch lever is connected to the column wheel and the clutch wheel is directly connected to the drive wheel that's pressed onto the seconds pinion. When the chrono function is activated, the clutch wheel slides horizontally into the center seconds runner. Don't forget to remove and install the spring for clutch when installing the clutch lever and wheel. This is the spring we talked about earlier on in the video. The last part we'll be installing before we test the chronograph is the operating lever hook cover. The operating lever hook cover holds down the column wheel, the column wheel jumper sole, the operating lever, and the intermediate minute wheel counter lever. Now, let's go over what should happen when activating the chronograph. When pushing the start button, the operating lever rotates the column wheel and releases the brake lever. When the column wheel rotates, the return to zero hammers are also lifted and the intermediate clutch wheel engages with the center seconds runner. There's a finger underneath the seconds runner and after one minute, this finger advances the intermediate minute wheel counter and the minute wheel advances, tracking and recording the passing time of one minute. Now let's take a look at the display side. Here you have the crown where you can wind and set the watch. You have your hour hand, your minute hand, and your seconds hand for keeping time. You have your start and stopwatch button as well as the reset button here. This is your seconds runner for the stopwatch function. This is your minute counter and hour counter hands for the stopwatch function. Once we press the start button, the seconds runner immediately begins to advance, tracking the seconds. After one minute, when the seconds runner makes its way around the dial, you'll see the minute counter advance and record the passing time of one minute. Watch closely now to the minute counter. As the seconds hand passes, the minute counter jumps. Now let's see what happens when we stop the chronograph and press the reset button. I stopped the seconds runner at 30 seconds, just so you can see how fast 
the hands reset. So I stop the chronograph with the stop button at 30 seconds. Boom. Now we'll be resetting the chronograph with the reset button, watching how fast the hands reset. In an instant, the seconds counter and minute counter have returned to zero. So now we can say that start, stop, and reset functions of the chronograph are all working properly. Now let's flip the watch over and see this motion in work. As mentioned earlier, once we start the chronograph, we'll be pushing the start button. The operating lever will advance the column wheel around, dropping the intermediate seconds counter into the center seconds runner. The center seconds runner will then turn, advancing the minute counters. The hammers will also lift as well as the brake. So let's give that start button a good push. Watch the operating lever turn the column wheel. The brake lever lifts as well as the return to zero hammer. The intermediate seconds wheel engages with the center seconds wheel. Now the chronograph function is running. Once we stop the chronograph, the intermediate seconds wheel lifts away from the center seconds wheel and the brake engages. Notice the return to zero hammers have not come down. However, the chronograph function has stopped. Now let's return to zero by pressing the reset button. Once the reset button is pressed, the brake lifts and the hammer drops, returning the seconds runner and minute counter to zero. I thank you all for watching and remember, time's radical.